Hello and welcome to another Tweedy Outdoors video. I have come to Dartmoor. I'm really quite excited about this one. Um, it somehow just seemed like the right time after the events of earlier this year and the, uh, I, I believe, somewhat happy ending to that sort of debacle about whether or not you can wild camp on Dartmoor. Uh, I know not everyone's happy with how that wound up, but I think, you know, for the time being, um, let's just uh, let's get on with it and enjoy it. Um, so uh, I've got the train to Oakhampton, just availed myself the station buffet there, and I'm going to walk up onto the moor from here. Down below me is the, probably can't see that, East Oakman River, and there's this nice easy track, well easy for now anyway, uh, that follows the East Oakman, uh, East Oakman River up onto the moor. Um, and uh, that's the route I'm gonna take to begin with. It looks um, you know, well marked and easy. Um, and I'm hoping while I'm there to find a couple of stone circles and go for a wild camp uh, somewhere on the moor, assuming the conditions are okay. The weather looks relatively mild tonight for the time of year. Hopefully no torrential rain, hopefully no gale force winds, nothing crazy like that. So it is February, it's sort of mid-February now almost, um, but um, I'm hoping for a relatively mild night for the time of year. Uh, but I'll just, you know, see how it goes because um, great thing about Dartmoor is the world is your oyster. Uh, as long as you're in the purple bits. More of that sort of causeway bit where um walk along the rocks. Wish I had a zoom. Well I've left the East Oakman River now. Um, I didn't film the crossing because there was a sort of big family group there and I thought it'd be a bit intrusive but uh, I'm now, uh, great camera work time, well done Tweedy, um, heading up onto something that's gonna hopefully look a bit more like open moorland. Not that I was uh, not enjoying that lovely wooded valley back there. That was delightful. But, uh, you know, can't come to Dartmoor and not have a good bit of bleak open moor. Well, I, I, mean, I say I'm looking for bleak open moor, but in that direction there's almost the threat of a bit of blue sky. I was hoping I might see some early spring flowers, but uh, gorse, of course, of course, gorse, of course, gorse just flowers all year round. I would call this open moorland now uh, and this is pretty great I've only been walking for maybe 40 minutes out of uh, straight out of Oakhampton station the train got in about an hour ago uh, 20 minutes maybe faffing around at the cafe uh, yeah about 40 minutes to here um, and I think uh, if we're not actually already on the purple zone of the camping map then we're very very close so uh, up there is Bellstone Tor the uh, East Oakman Valley behind us and uh, just up here is the Nine Ladies Stone Circle. But it seems like there's actually a whole bunch of people. Hello, Fantastic, like thank you. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> well uh, I kind of imagine that would be more of a sort of solitary exploration of uh, the Nine Ladies Stone Circle but uh, that was fun in its own way. There was uh, a big group, I don't know, hikers or something there. Very nice of them to uh, participate. Um, it's yet another one of those stone circles that has uh, a legend about people dancing on the Sabbath and being punished, and being turned to stone. And there are invariably either nine maidens there or 17 squires or I don't know, whatever. And um, you find the same thing at Stanton Drew and the uh, similarly named Nine Ladies stone circle in the Peak District. Look how the views are opening up here though. This is glorious. There is even a bit of blue sky spoiling the bleak atmosphere I was hoping for. Uh, and, uh, and of course, this is sort of the edge of, of Dartmoor here. And uh, so beyond what we're looking to there is, um, you know, the sort of North Devon countryside, possibly in the far distance over there. Tweedy at dolls pointing at things time is um, Exmoor, I guess, the, uh, the line of hills right in the, uh, I may not know what I'm talking about, but uh, something like that. And I think down there is the, the Tor T 
T-A-W, not T-O-R, Valley. Note to self, idea for a new channel, Tawdry Outdoors. Not quite sure what the content would be yet, but the name's good. Many of my first experiences of coming to Dartmoor were to do letterboxing with my uh, my dad. Uh, my brother came along some of the time, and uh, it's uh, it's funny being in this sort of landscape, this kind of hillside. Immediately, the uh, the parts of my brain that have lain dormant for decades are springing back to life. There are always clues like um, on the west slope of Tor, under a large flat rock near a lone tree. And then you get to that side of the Tor, and you'd see as we can here, 12, 15 lone trees and about 4,000 large flat rocks. Probably a bit of uh, unstable camera work there, but uh, I'm loving the view there. I think I've got the, uh, is that the River Tor down to the left of me, which is probably tumbling down from a Tor, the other spelling of Tor. Lovely collection of manhole covers here. Presumably an art installation. Here we are at the, uh, the Ford. Uh, how waterproof are my boots feeling? Climb every mountain, ford every stream. Can you hear that? Nothing. It's remarkably still. I assumed there would always be at least some breeze on the moor. Maybe I'm in a sheltered bit here, I don't know, but. You know, just look at the grass, it's not moving at all. And it's pretty much silent here. It's amazing, apart from, uh, well, the idiot talking to you right now. There is uh, an actual footpath marked on the map here, the green dotted line, but I'm um, struggling a bit to find it. What I can find is this, what looks to me like an old, a very old sort of field boundary or something, with a kind of uh, a long linear, embankment going that way and that way look very clean though sheep i wonder if they've uh farmers taken them off to have a dip i don't know if you can even see them maybe this was a footpath after all perhaps an ancient one with a little embankment to help mark it looks like it's almost got a few marker stones along the way as well look at that view i hope i hope the gopro is doing that some justice and dartmoor views I don't know, maybe they're challenging for the GoPro because uh, this time of year especially there's a lot of fairly muted dull greens, dull browns. But that silvery sky up there and the vast expanse of just nothingness. I love it. Beautiful. What time is it? It is about 3... 3.40. 20 to 4. Sunset, um, I haven't checked the exact time, but I think it's after five now. Uh, nice light, actually, over there. Uh, promising that the sun is managing to peek through the clouds a bit, so there might be at least a little bit of a sunset to watch later. And there's this nice late afternoon light on the, uh, the hillsides here. Some remains of a settlement here. Um, don't know anything about it other than what's on the OS map. Um, Almost has a slight air of stone circle here, actually, but uh, I think this is apparently some ancient dwelling or livestock enclosure. It's a very purposeful upright stone there. Some sort of boundary marker, maybe? The sun does not feel like just sort of faint winter sun. It's got this glorious kind of spring-like warmth to it. Oh dear. Well, it was bound to happen sooner or later, wasn't it? I uh, underestimated a tussock, one of these boggy bits, big boggy bits. And that one's pretty treacherous. It's obviously got a big hole that's pouring down into from the sound of it. Oh well, one wet foot. Great bit of footage here. 
<laughs> Literally footage. Haha, <laughs> Tweedy Outdoors, you're hilarious. It does seem to be taking a really long time to get to this next stone circle. I'm sort of very slowly and inefficiently skirting around this the edge of this hill. I think this is sort of you know a lower bits of Little Hound Tor, which has nothing to do with the more famous Hound Tor, the other side of Dartmoor. But um doesn't matter I suppose if it takes if it takes ages because it is absolutely delightful being here. It's not cold, I'm not getting wet. Probably too small to point at things. <laughs> this is ridiculous. That over there, you, I don't know if you can make out a little kind of um, shelter thing on top. That's uh, Steeperton Tor, and then Oak Tor is more over this way. I'm uh, pretty much at the top of Little Hound Tor. Um, quick shout out to Trev. Hi Trev from Summit or Nothing. Um, I watched one of his uh, videos of doing a, a similar kind of route to this before coming out today and um, I think he said that Little Hound Tour didn't really have much to show for itself so uh, maybe that is it, that little outcrop there. But hopefully as we come over the brow of this hill we'll finally be able to see that uh, stone circle. Uh, I'll come back to you. Actually maybe this is the absolute top of Hound Tor. Uh, again, really not much to show for itself, uh, but I like it because look at the views from here. And of course, uh, another shout out uh, to uh, the Dartmoor podcast, uh, still very much a favourite of mine. Dartmoor is uh, is really lucky in terms of YouTube content. There's, um, you know, those two absolutely spectacular Dartmoor podcast and um, Summit or Nothing. And of course it gets featured in a lot of other videos. And then um, finally, um, I don't know if I'm running out of cards, um, uh, I'd like to say hi to, to Rich uh, from 4SB, 4 Season Backpacking, uh, who I've said before, I uh, draw a lot of inspiration for my walks. And he has a video where he walked up from uh, um, Oakhampton. Um, and uh, at least for the first part of my walk today, I pretty much followed his route. So thanks to all of you for the inspiration. Absolutely spectacular to be here. And look, over there, finally, the stone circle. So this is the Whitemore stone circle. I think it sometimes just gets called the Little Hound Tor stone circle. It's sort of just below Little Hound Tor. Uh, I think it's Bronze Age. Most of the uh, stone circles on Dartmoor seem to be of that sort of era. What a spectacular location this is in. This is just beautiful. The views in almost every direction. Only really little hound tour obscuring some of the view up that way. There's also a lone standing stone, which I think is just called the White Moor Standing Stone. I think it's been engraved with, uh, is that probably a boundary marker? I think, I can't really see it now, but I think this is DC for Duchy of Cornwall. Forget what TP stands for, I'll put, um, I'll put a caption down there. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about um, engraving your uh, territory like that in a um, Bronze Age monument, but um, probably happened a long time ago. Surprisingly, I can see other people out and about. There's a couple of people over there. There's a group of four the other side of the valley I can just about see. Um, and it's uh, it's half an hour before sunset, unless they're also planning on camping out for the evening. Can't see backpacks from here, but unless they are, then um, they've got a bit of a trek in the dark to get back to civilization now, I guess. Well, I've uh, I've dithered for a while. The other walkers walked on. Um, I think I think I'm going to camp here. I and mean, when when else am I going to have an opportunity to camp right in the middle of a stone circle? So um, there's a flat-ish spot there, the ground's not wet. It should be uh, um, not too soft, not too hard to get pegs in. 
uh, very still at the moment. It is obviously exposed here. If the wind picks up, this is going to be a windy spot. But right now, there, there isn't any wind, and I don't think it's forecast to be more than um, you know just a few miles an hour. So uh, <laughs> I'll give it a go. Maybe it's a silly idea, but we'll try it. There we go. I hope this is uh, not considered disrespectful, but um, but there you go. I have uh, my silly claustrophobic tent. Probably the best pitch I've ever managed with that. Actually, I've um, I've double pegged the ends because I found um, all the faffing about the uh, the pegs are coming out, and this ground here is lovely and firm. So um, perhaps there's a more secure way of double pegging that. I never really know what I'm doing, but uh, just in time for the uh, glorious sunset there. Pretty pleased with that that spot. Um, hope nobody minds. I mean, you know, it's going to be dark so no one will see it. And I will, of course, be, uh, be gone first thing in the morning. So hopefully I'm not spoiling anybody's view. And this is definitely in the, uh, the purple bit on the, uh, the Dartmoor camping map. Tonight, I have brought along um, so, Gevray Chambertin, just for a change, uh, some wine from the village of Gevray Chambertin in Burgundy uh, in the Cote de Nuit. Uh, this is a producer called Taupe Not Merm uh, that I've had a couple of times before. Uh, fly on there, the nerve of it. Really enjoyed this, maybe a different vintage. 2017 is usually a good bet for me. So, um, still a, a little, little hint of the sunset remaining, so I think it's time to uh, crack that open and have a glass. <laughs> this is great content, isn't it? The cork really did not want to come out. It's um, one of those sort of technical corks, which is maybe not such a bad thing as every now and again I've had a faulty bottle from these guys. Uh, when it's good, it's fantastic. I hope not Merm. But I did seem to have a bit of a problem with uh, with funk. Not in the Bootsy Collins sense, in the um, kind of unwanted things creeping into your wine. That to me is in pretty good shape. Today's dinner, for a change, I'm going to be using uh, a gas stove. I want it to be absolutely as play by the rules as possible while here on Dartmoor. Um, and um, I, I, I'm fairly sure the usual BCB Fire Dragon fuel is just as safe as a gas stove, but um, you know, just in case from a distance anyone thinks it looks like a little fire, I will absolutely not be having a little fire. Um, so, full gas canister, um, you know, standard thing, nicely fits inside Billy Can. Um, I can't even remember where my uh, burner thing is from. It might be Vango or something. I've only used it a couple of times. I hope it actually works because I don't have a backup with me. I know what you're thinking. You think Tweedy Outdoors, you never actually chopped anything apart from, uh, you know, vaguely chopping up that haggis last time he was here. So for today's dinner, we brought along vegetables that actually need chopping. That is an onion probably familiar with, uh, with those and um, I've got my trusty bright orange sheathed Mora Kniv and I'm going to proceed to give that a bit of a chop uh, see how well this works on this silly table and of course this knife's made for sort of bushcrafty stuff it's not really designed for uh, chopping up vegetables and it's quite thick and chunky but hopefully it will it will work nonetheless. Isn't this great footage? What do you mean chop an onion up? <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not leaving that on the floor. You know, to leave it on the floor, I will temporarily put it there and then it's going in the rubbish bag and it will all be carried back to civilization with me. So I'm not going to faff about too much with this. Let's give that a rough chop in half and then cut it into strips. Um, look, I've got both hands free, but I've, I've stuffed the, um, the camera in my uh, jacket pocket for now. You know, the, uh, the pocket that your pocket square would normally go in. So, um, 
knob of butter, and that goes to there. Um, I haven't actually told you what I'm making yet, have I? Um, uh, the suspense must be killing you. Perhaps it's in the title or the thumbnail. So, knob of butter in there. I have one of these little, uh, is it called a piezo light lighter? Just makes a little spark. You know, like the like the thing you'd use at home to light your gas hob. So I think hopefully I can do a nice thing about gas is you do uh, gas camping stoves you do have a bit of control over how strong the flame is great we are literally cooking with gas mmm just the smell of butter already quite nice okay so into that goes these um, I'm gonna have to use my hands a bit <laughs> rather not handle onions directly but um not like i'm going to be in the company of any other humans for the next 12 hours or so so if i do stink of onions who cares um well i should tell you what i'm making um tonight i'm making a, uh, a japanese curry um now um this is very important. Um, this often in the UK gets called katsu curry. Um, now, katsu curry is one particular... I, I'm sorry if I'm teaching my grandmother to suck eggs, and you already know all of this, but, um, but it does upset Japanese people. And I want to put the record straight. Katsu curry is a Japanese curry... I'm dropping onion while I'm talking here... is a Japanese curry with uh, a cutlet on the side. So usually pork um, or... Um, could be chicken, chicken katsu, pork katsu, um, a, a, a sort of a, a slab of meat coated in breadcrumbs, deep fried, and that's an accompaniment on the side to the curry sauce. Katsu, uh, it's a corruption of cutlet, katsu curry. Um, if the cutlet is not on the side, it's not a katsu curry. So you know, Japanese curry can exist without the katsu. So if you don't have the katsu, it's not a katsu curry. Japanese people get very upset about you know, misusing that term. So this is just Japanese curry, there's no katsu. Um, just to be clear. Ridiculously, I have brought along a, um, a peeler, a vegetable peeler, because I'm no good at... Um, I actually think I'm reasonably handy with, uh, with a chopping knife. One thing I'm really not good at is, um, is peeling vegetables without the, uh, without, a, you know, this kind of vegetable peeler. So, um, here is a potato. Isn't this exciting? Look, I'm actually using um, fresh vegetables and peeling them and chopping them rather than just doing all that work at home beforehand. I will pick up all these potato peelings, I promise. I'm not going to leave um, a shred of evidence that I have been here tomorrow morning. Uh, not even biodegradable stuff. It's all going back to civilization with me. I'm going to roughly... I say roughly chop that, but it won't it won't cook. This really isn't um, actually a great knife for chopping vegetables. It's sort of, you know, it's sharp, but it's so thick. And um, anyway, it'll it'll do the job. Okay, potatoes go in. Is that a stir? More great YouTube content. Tweety Outdoors peels a carrot. Right. A bit more. Uh oh. That's probably not great. Uh oh. Yeah. The carrot's problematic because it sort of flies off once you've chopped a bit off. Light's going a bit now. Um, one last bit and then I will put the, uh, the, uh, the light thing on. I'm going to pour some water into there to cover those. That will hopefully stop the, uh, the burning on the bottom. Oh, I forgot one important ingredient. Probably you want to look away now because um, I'm guessing there aren't any huge hands of uh, textured vegetable protein. Soya chunks. That is a bunch of beige slop bubbling away. Um, I managed to fill the uh, billy can a bit too full, probably, but um, hopefully this will work out. Um, you yeah, know, I mean, so far uh, that could be any dish, really, couldn't it? Um, but the, um, the ingredient which turns it into Japanese curry is uh, this block of 
we used to call them roux, curry roux, which is like a sort of, you know, curry paste block thing. Um, uh, you're probably familiar with this, you can get it in um, supermarkets in the UK now. Okay, well, um, I think uh, I think that is approaching a point where the um, vegetables are just about cooked. So um, in goes the uh, Japanese curry roux block. Give that a bit of a stir around, and I think I might... Just looking at my arm here, just um, I'm aware this is very, very precarious here, so um, I, I want to have at least one hand on the billy while I'm moving this about. So um, I reckon that will probably be okay for now. If I give that a stir around, turn the gas off and let it sit for a while. Just in case you wanted to see the uh, the beige slop turning into sort of brown slop. That's been sitting for a few minutes now. Um, quite sure how visible that's going to be. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> doesn't look that appealing, does it? Brown slop. Hmm. I'm pretty happy with that, actually. That is nice. You probably won't find another video on YouTube of uh, a guy in a tweed suit camping in the middle of a stone circle drinking Jevray Chambertan and eating Japanese curry made with soya chunks so um, um, here's to being an individual cheers everybody that's the, uh, the damage I, whatever I cook in my billy can I always seem to end up burning it a bit on the bottom, but you know, um, I actually think that was a resounding success. I haven't seen a lot of uh, Japanese curry done as a sort of camping meal, but um, I, I, I think it works really well. Just like to say a quick hi to uh, Jim, who I sent a photo to uh, earlier of the wine and wine glass on the stupid little table without the tablecloth from the previous video, and he was horrified at the. Um, the lack of decorum. So, um, just for you, Jim, uh, here's a, uh, a retake of that with the tablecloth. Thought I might take a uh, stroll around the stone circle in the dark with a glass of Chevrolet Chambertin, of course. Classic Tweedy Outdoors. It is a bit chilly now. Um, it's what time is it? Seven thirty or something. But uh, you know, I felt a little stroll might help my feet defrost. I've decided to retreat inside the tent. It is uh, twenty-five past eight, um, and it was just getting a little bit chilly outside. Uh, so uh, nice and warm in here though, you know, not quite ready to go to sleep, but I think uh, once again uh, I will attempt to get a head start on the video editing, uh, which will be a good way to uh, spend the time. Well, to my surprise, it's actually after 11, I managed to spend uh, a couple of hours uh, doing uh, more than that, I guess, doing video editing. Got a good head start on that. Um, which was good. Uh, I've got a feeling this is going to be another long video, so you know, if you've got this far, thank you. Um, I guess I should probably go to sleep then. Uh, wind has come up a little bit, I suppose it was inevitable. Uh, there was no way it was going to be a uh, completely still night uh, on Dartmoor, that just seemed too good to be true. Uh, but uh, you know, hopefully, with the uh, the double pegging and all that, um, uh, the forecast wasn't for strong wind, it was just sort of relatively mild. So. I hope I will get away with that despite being in this sort of fairly exposed spot. Anyway, too much babbling. Um, I will see you in the morning. Good night. Good morning. Um, it is five to seven, so um, something like half an hour or so before sunrise. Um, don't think there is going to be much to look at. It is. Sorry about the uh, horizon there, a bit bleak out there. So we're getting the full Dartmoor experience. Well, good morning. Um, that is how the tent is currently looking. Um, and um, I don't think there's gonna be much of a 
the sunrise it's pretty cloudy all round uh, a tiny bit brighter over there maybe but um, yeah probably not much not much to see uh, how long do we have another 20 minutes or so till sunrise and um, I'm quite pleased with how well the tent held up I think the, uh, the secret uh, seems to have got a bit of bag sticking out there but there's nothing really in it so if it gets wet it's not the end of the world secret seems to have been double pegging last night but, you know hopefully you can get a sense of the wind there and you probably can't hear me either with the wind but um the uh the double pegging particularly these ones down the end because this thing's so ridiculously small um usually by me sort of um shuffling around in the night in in my sleep i normally end up pulling these pegs out but uh double pegging great well maybe there is a tiny hint of something like a sunrise over there at least a bit of pink sky um i've been stuck inside the tent i've missed the actual moment uh of sunrise so um but i've been um inside the tent trying to deal with all the uh the tat i've managed to pack everything into the bag inside the tent so i can stay warm um of course the one thing you can't really do that with is the tent itself so um i guess i'd better uh give that a go my uh, strategy for this is uh take the central pole out first while it's still pegged down and then i've got my bag on there to weight it down and now i'm going to try and take the pegs out all the while that i'm faffing with that i'm um, i'm missing that sky over there but uh, never mind has to be done right all packed up all back in the bag hashtag leave no trace not a trace left not even a uh, bit of potato peeling oh is that a stray soya chunk there i will take that with me going to miss the uh, stone circle there bye bye so i'm going to go a slightly different route back to Oakhampton. I'd rather sort of stay on slightly higher ground, try and keep a bit drier. So that over there is Cosden Hill, Cosden Beacon. Uh, I think there's a trig point on top of there, according to the OS map. And uh, I reckon if I go up to the top of that, then I'll have better tracks uh, to head down. Nice light over there. The uh, moors looking I don't know what the right adjective is. Um, it's not quite bleak this morning. It's sort of quite majestic over there. Uh, slightly more pensive in that direction, maybe. Well, this is Cosden Hill or uh, Cosden Beacon. Um, oh, what a mess. Uh, there's a cairn here, as well as a trig point, and um, even what looks like a sort of, um, you know, a kind of natural shelter or something there. Natural shelter? I don't know, stone shelter. Uh, nice and lumpy inside. You probably can't hear me, can you? With the wind. Quite a view from here. I'm now walking down the um, what's this, what's this? I suppose the west side of Cosden Hill. I'm sort of making this up as I go a little bit. The um, OS map doesn't really mark a lot of uh, paths, um, but I could see this from the uh, the aerial photography that's often quite useful on Dartmoor I could see there was some sort of path here and I think this will connect me with um, the route I took yesterday if I more or less get down to the valley here I don't know if I mentioned this yesterday but these sheep around here seem bizarrely clean must have just been in the dip each to their own I guess I must have uh, crossed this yesterday i'm now um i'm back on the route that i walked yesterday 
Um, but I've got this small boggy stream to get across. I can't remember the exact point I hopped over yesterday, perhaps a bit further down here. And that's too small for the GoPro to focus, but there is a mushroom growing out of that rock there. Weird. I'm uh, now back to the Ford. I sang my way across yesterday. Climb every mountain, Ford every stream. The runners, I don't know if you caught the runners earlier. This is a bit unnerving. Uh, I don't know if you caught the runners, but they just ran straight across here, so I doubt their um, running shoes, whatever they were, would be extremely waterproof. They have wet feet now. Back to this track now. Can't quite figure out the colour of the sky up there. Is it sort of dark and rain cloudy, or is it just a deep blue? It's a weird colour, I don't know if that's getting picked up okay on the GoPro. Well taken Concord. More of those immaculate sheep here. No sheep that lives on the moor should be that clean. Returning now to the stone circle from yesterday with the uh, Hello Tweedy Outdoors group. Uh, thanks, thanks to everyone there for being uh, good sports. Um, and I've got it all to myself now, so um, I think I'm gonna take a little break here and uh, enjoy, as I calling it the nine ladies, the nine stones for a bit. It doesn't take uh, an archeologist to notice that there are in fact more than nine stones here. Uh, difficult to count actually because, um, I don't know, is this recumbent one over here meant to be part of the circle or not? Perhaps it was originally positioned there, I don't know. Um, and some of them are tiny, but uh, you know, they at least run into double figures. Definitely more than nine. And it's a lovely spot as well. Um, perhaps this one wouldn't have been quite as well suited for camping in the middle of because it's quite bumpy the interior but you know you could definitely have pitched a tent sort of behind that rock or something um lovely view across to the um is that the east oakmont valley i'm about to follow back down to oakhampton and off to north devon over there so i hope I can make it back to Oakhampton station in under an hour from here because uh, all I can think about now, um, you know, and I really ought to just be enjoying what time I have left in this majestic countryside. But to be honest, all I can think about now is the station cafe and the prospect of a fry up. It was just too cold and windy to bother uh, turning on the gas stove and I didn't really have anything for breakfast anyway. It would have been a, a coffee and um, I don't know, some dried fruit or whatever I had in my bag, which wouldn't have been very exciting. And that pales in comparison with the thought of a full English at the Oakhampton Station Cafe. Isn't this lovely? Don't drop the camera in the river. I think this is just the amuse-bouche before you get to Dartmoor. Is it me or is there a face in that tree? Very Miyazaki. Sad after the freedom of Dartmoor. Back at Oakhampton Station. Very good time between now and the next train to have a fry up. station cafe I've ever been to. It's unclear to me why anyone would put themselves through the um, hassle of 
trying to cook on a camp stove in what was it, 25 mile an hour winds. Um, and there's a fantastic station cafe not far away on the way back. So um, I'm going to tuck into this good old HP sauce. Cheers. I really enjoyed that. The um, fry up. Can you see that nice old sign? Oakhampton. There's the, uh, the youth hostel just across the, uh, the tracks there. So um, timing worked out absolutely perfectly there. Uh, I've just got a few minutes before the train back to Exeter. I'm going to go pop in, say hi to my dad who lives uh, in that neck of the woods. Um, before getting the train back home later on. So, um, I've really enjoyed that adventure. I'm, um, Oakhampton is uh, an absolute game changer. The fact that there is now a train and pretty good service, I think, you know, one an hour, um, you can get from London to Oakhampton in just over three hours. Uh, and it makes this kind of overnighter really practical, like really, really achievable. Uh, it was, what was it, 40? five minutes an hour or something um, up onto the moor so you know in summer <laughs> at a pinch you could just about do a day's work get on the train and then um, hoof it down to Oakhampton and do a, a late night wild camp um, maybe uh, anyway I'm babbling thank you very much for watching I really enjoyed that uh, adventure and I will see you on the next one